So it's pretty cool, pretty fun. Yeah. And all you got to do is click a button on a computer, uh, and away you go. Uh, so if you're interested in helping with kids, we need your help. Uh, the more the merrier. Um, and that's a taste of what's coming. This is different than when I grew up. Uh, when I grew up, um, you know, Sunday school, you know, might have used a flannel graph or just coloring sheets or whatever. Um, we don't live in that day anymore. Uh, things have changed, and we have to change with it to figure out how to communicate well and to give ourselves the freedom to figure that out. And to be totally honest with you, um, in terms of how we shape our children's ministry, how we shape what we do with the people that I think we can reach as a church, um, I think that is going to be determined not so much just by me, but by we. Because we live in a new age, and we kind of need all hands on deck and all heads in the game to think what makes the most sense for us to continue being the church that we can be uh, in this culture and do it effectively. And so all ideas welcome. Uh, help us figure this thing out because our mission is clear. I'll be talking more about that next week. Not unclear on that. Uh, we have a job to do um, and we have the tools to do it. And the great news is this crosswalk is, is a place that I think is pretty special in that you people are crazy. <laughs> And you allow crazy stuff to happen, which I love. You don't know how cool you are, I don't think. So let me just tell you how cool you are. Uh, you're cool enough to put up with a pastor who thought a U2 Sunday would be a cool idea. <laughs> and some of you liked it. <laughs> uh, you're cool enough to just ride with things and try weird stuff like, you know, ABC's and one, two, three, face-off challenge, and who knows what else. You're cool enough to gather around tables for worship instead of in rows all looking forward. You're cool enough for the past many years uh, to say, yeah, we got a beautiful sanctuary in there, but what about this? Let's do church out here. That's so cool. I don't even think you know how cool you are, uh, and that's incredible. So applause to you. I mean, seriously, you're awesome, uh, and I can say that with authority because I work with a lot of pastors in our region. And when I tell them one or just one or two things uh, that we do around here, uh, they just kind of sit up straight and they're like, I could never get away with that. And I said, well, that's, well, because, that's because, because your people, people aren't, aren't as cool, cool as ours. <laughs> Except for our sound guy who's jacking with me right now. All right. <laughs> so that's kind of the flavor of... Uh, of <laughs> of uh, what we're doing with our kids, and we're going to get to you in a moment because there's some questions that we want to do. Because now at this point with children, what we would do is we would ask them uh, some questions and jog their thinking a little bit and create some community and some uh, connecting the dots between what we just learned in the scripture, uh, the memory verse of the week, and real life. And we'll get to that in a moment because I'm going to make you ask and answer a question around the table in just a minute. And you don't have to say anything if you don't want to because not everybody's cool with that and that's fine. Um, but before we get to that, this love one another uh, commandment, you need to know where this, sh this shows up in Scripture. Um, I shared this with the men's breakfast yesterday, which was, again, awesome. And I thank the men here for showing up. It's always so good. And I come away every time we have one just thinking man we got the coolest guys uh, who are willing to come together share open together and grow together it's just awesome so thank you we talked about this verse in its context Jesus is with the disciples and he says I give you a new commandment love one another as I have loved you love one another what we don't remember is this was this was toward the end of Jesus's life and the end of his ministry. And so when he says, love one another as I have loved you, it's not like these guys just got off the fishing boat, uh, as some of them uh, did to follow Jesus, and they're like, well, I wonder what love looks like. Well, love looks like everything I thought it looked like. No, it's way different than that. Because these guys have spent um, maybe up to three years walking around with Jesus and there were times when Jesus led them to places out of love that probably in their first experience didn't feel like love at all. And yet as his followers, they had to follow. Like I'm thinking, um, they probably didn't feel too loved uh, when Jesus, right in the early parts of the Gospel of John, decides to take a shortcut 
from the north of Israel to the south of Israel. And the Gospel of John says Jesus had to go through Samaria. Well, I spent five weeks on that passage many years ago. And one of the things that we looked at was that Jesus did not have to go through Samaria. In fact, most people did not go through Samaria because Jews hated Samaria. They would sidetrack it. They would bypass it. So they wouldn't have to go through what they thought was this country of half-breeds. Because that's how they thought about it historically. But Jesus had to. Not had to geog geographically, but had to because of his passion and wanting to reach an entirely different people group. A people group that these disciples loathed. So they probably didn't feel too loved at that moment because they probably announced their outcry. What are you Why are we going this way? This is a terrible idea. I don't want to go this way. I'm very uncomfortable around these people. Uh, what are they going to do to us? We could get killed. So they had all kinds of fears, but Jesus' love for them said, we're crossing the boundary and we're going into Samaria where you think these people are so awful. And we're going to learn something together. And learn they did. He did this time and time again. If it wasn't going into Samaria, and by the way, for, for modern examples here, just fill in different people groups' names here as we go along. So maybe, maybe Samaritans or Mexicans, or people coming to the United States from Central America. And so you're uptight about that. And culturally, we may be uptight about that. Well, guess where Jesus takes us? right across the border to find out the humanity of the people that we hate. In another instance, Jesus goes into a leper colony. Uh, the disciples surely said, don't you know we could get leprosy if we go around those people? Who knows what could happen? This doesn't feel very loving to me. I can't believe you're taking me here. And once again, Jesus' love says, I want to I love you into this. So you experience the love of God powerfully for people you think uh, are beyond reach, literally. And if it wasn't Samaritans, and if it wasn't uh, lepers, then it was people of ill repute. So you had tax collectors who nobody liked, or people with the past who were prostitutes that the religious community kept their distance from, and one after another. As the, as the boys would follow Jesus, and they'd see this person, which they culturally had been trained to avoid and loathe one after another. <laughs> Jesus just says, come on, guys. I love you so much, I want you to follow me and meet this guy named Levi, who's a tax collector. And we're going to change this guy's life, just like we did Zacchaeus' life that you saw that happen. And here's this woman here. Her name, um, we actually don't know her name, um, but this is a woman who, who has had such a terrible past, she can't even look us in the eye. And we're going to go right up to her and give her a big hug and let her know that she's loved by God and that we support her and her life going forward. The guys immediately probably weren't excited about that and it didn't feel very loving. And yet they started to learn the more they followed Jesus what love actually looked like. Um, there was another instance where somebody uh, was born blind, uh, which in their culture suggested that God... Uh, judge them or judge their ancestors from the very beginning. Even before the kid was born, a curse was on that kid. So who better to stay away from? Who better to avoid? But Jesus, again, had no problem going up to people with all kinds of physical illnesses and abnormalities, places where the disciples were uncomfortable. But it wasn't just about other people groups. Sometimes, sometimes Jesus got in the face of his disciples you remember that classic story of Peter uh, where Jesus is saying, who do people say that I am? And they're kind of taking, you know, guesses about what people are saying. And then finally, Peter says, well, you're the, you're the anointed one, the one we've been waiting for. The word for that is Christ or Messiah. You're the anointed one of God. And, you know, Jesus rings the bell and says, you win the award, Chef Boyardee for you, you know, today, Peter. On this rock I will build my church, not on Peter specifically, but on this belief that, yep, we got an anointed one right here before us. We're going to follow this one. But not long after that, like within a chapter, we find that Peter has forgotten <laughs> his place, forgotten that there's one more anointed than him in the room. And that one anointed is saying to the rest of them, 
Well, here's the drill, guys. Uh, we're going to be heading back to Jerusalem. It's not going to be pretty. It's going to be real ugly. Uh, I'm probably going to get killed, uh, but that's what we need to be doing. And immediately, Peter's like, we're not doing that. that. That's not our plan. We're not going back to Jerusalem because you're going to get killed. And Jesus' loving words back to Peter were what? Get behind me, Satan. Well, that's more than a name calling. He's not insulting him here, but he's challenging him. He's holding him accountable. Sometimes love means holding someone accountable. Sometimes love being held accountable. As we think about this new command that Jesus gave the disciples, this is not to be taken lightly. And as we think about what does it mean to be kind and to show love, It's more than just perhaps everything you've always thought that love looked like because the disciples had their idea of what love looked like too. This is my... Thank you very much. No? Hello, hello. So my question for you is, what does love look like? And is it possible that there are new ways for you to experience what this love could look like? Now, you might think, Pete, we got this nailed. I mean, you just told us we we're a cool church and all, and, you know, I think we got this. Well, I'm not so sure. Uh, so Gary Mills um, got this article uh, to me. Uh, this is from August 13, this past uh, Monday. Anybody read this from the Connections about the Be Kind March that happened yesterday? Uh, Tallulah Finkelstein, 11, and Ruby Finkelstein, 8, are inviting the Napa Valley community to join them and for joined them for Be Kind Napa Day on Saturday, August 18 in Yonville. With the help of parents Judd and Holly, the sisters have organized the second annual Be Kind Napa Day, which includes a walk through Yonville and a celebration at the Napa Valley uh, Museum. They came up with the idea after visiting a family friend, Lori Phillips, in New York City. Phillips had begun distributing Be Kind buttons to foster kindness throughout New York and surrounding areas. After observing the friendly interactions Phillips campaign inspired, they decided to spread kindness in Napa and ordered Be Kind buttons to distribute locally. Be Kind buttons are showing up around the valley. At a recent Napa Valley uh, Silverado's baseball game, the players were wearing them. Be Kind Napa starts with a kindness walk in Yontville. Walkers are encouraged to bring signs bearing messages of kindness and gather at the Yontville Community Center at 9.30. Those who don't have a button will be provided with one and the walk uh, would begin at 10.15. The route went through Yontville and culminated at the Napa Valley Museum, where attendees will be met by musicians, sweet treats, art projects, and speakers focused on compassion and benevolence. The goal of the day is to spotlight the power of kindness to strengthen community. Be Kind Napa is a kid-driven and kid-led event that is not a protest, nor is it political or religious in nature. There will be no megaphones, just people walking, wearing their buttons, and holding signs to inspire kindness. Isn't that awesome? Like these kids get it. But there's an embarrassing part of the Be Kind March. And the embarrassing part is that we needed a Be Kind March. Because we have a culture, as a culture, as brilliant as we think we are, (laughs) we struggle with kindness. Our politicians don't know how to do it. Other leaders in our country don't know how to do it. We struggle knowing how to do it. So this imperative that Jesus gives, be at love one another as I have loved you, is no shallow thing. It's no shallow request. In fact, love being the base of everything that we value in life, it is worthwhile of a lifelong pursuit. And just when we think we've understood it fully something happens to us or in us and we find out there's a new facet of love we didn't know existed so it's never boring never gets old the love never runs out somebody really smart in the bible said love never fails and i'm wondering where you're at in that equation so i have a question for you to answer i don't know which question it is it's on the next screen though uh We're going to say this verse here in a second, but uh, I want you to pick one of these four questions.
questions and just answer it. You don't have to spend hardly any time on it. I just want to get you a feel for it. Those questions are, how do, you, how do we love each other today? So how do you show love today? How have you felt loved recently-ish? So, you know, whatever. It could be today. could be in the last season or whatever. How do we know if we have shown love to somebody else? And then who in your sphere uh, could use some love? And what does that look like? I say how, but that's kind of what it's getting at. So I just want you to pick one of those, and these are all in your, in your program thing uh, as well. Uh, share it around the table. It's not a hard question. It should come pretty easy. One of those should come pretty easy. But before you do, I want us to say uh, this verse out loud, because this would be, like for the kids, the memory verse of the day. So let's say this out loud. It's also in your program if you want to look at it there. Let's say it together. Let me give you a new command. Love one another. In the same way I loved you, you love one another. This is how everyone will recognize that you are my disciples when they see the love you have for each other. So take just three minutes. That's not very long, so that means you're answering pretty quick. Maybe five minutes. And I will be back with you. We'll close in prayer, and then we got one awesome song about kindness uh, coming up.